we have too many Linux distros. Or do we? Many people have certainly said we do, and I've certainly said the same as well. And if you look at the general landscape, it's very easy to see why. We have all of these different distro bases. Arch Linux, Debian, Ubuntu, which is different enough at this point to consider its own separate base. Red Hat, Gentoo, Void, and a bunch of others. And then all manner of other distros based on these bases. The problem is most of those distros don't really need to exist. A lot of them are just glorified desktop environment packages. If it's officially a part of the project, we call those a flavor. And then many others are basically just a glorified dot file collection, where the exact same could be achieved with a shell script plus the regular base distro. And it's really hard to know how many actually exist, but the general estimate is around 600 currently active, and the active distros are really the only ones that properly matter. And with Linux being FOSS, someone is always going to be out there making some new random distro, even if that distro doesn't really need to exist. And you could very easily argue a lot of these distros basically just clutter up the distro discussion and don't really help anyone. But what if I said that we need more Linux distros? And I don't mean those kind of distros. I mean distros that are pushing the envelope of what we know Linux to be capable of. So let's look at some examples. The first one being Bedrock Linux. Now, Bedrock Linux is a really weird distro because generally with a Linux distro, you have a package manager. It's Pac-Man, DNF, Apt, or anything else out there, and you just install packages from that package manager. Maybe you have flat packs, maybe you have snaps, but nothing else. Bedrock Linux is a meta Linux distribution, which allows users to mix and match components from other typically incompatible distributions. Bedrock integrates these components into one largely cohesive system. For example, one could have Debian's stable core utils, Arch's cutting edge kernel, Void's run it init system, a PDF reader with custom patches automatically maintained by Gen 2's portage, a font from Arch's AUR, games running against Ubuntu's libraries, which you probably don't want to be doing, and business software running against CentOS's libraries. If you think a rolling release is hard to maintain, this is a whole nother level. Do not touch Bedrock unless you have a deep understanding of what is going on in your Linux system. It is very easy to install packages from multiple package managers, start to break things, and everything starts to collapse. So why don't you try something easier like Fedora Silverblue? Silverblue is by no means the first immutable Linux distribution, but it is one of the earlier ones to structure it in a way that makes it popular for the regular Linux user. There are other systems like OpenSUSE or MicroOS, but this is more geared towards a enterprise use and a business use as opposed to Silverblue, where you're kind of expected to use this on your desktop. Even though Silverblue is just based on Fedora, and under the hood, Fedora is all still there, an immutable distribution is a vastly different way of interacting with a system. You're primarily installing things through flat packs as opposed to a native package manager, but you still can use a native package manager using an overlay package. Updates are done very differently because it uses OS tree, it has this image based system, and you can roll back through the images and basically downgrade your entire system with no hassle whatsoever. And while we're talking about immutable distros, we absolutely cannot forget the distro being used by the Steam Deck, SteamOS, specifically SteamOS 3. SteamOS 2 and older versions were just based on Debian. It was sort of your run-of-the-mill Debian fork, maybe some extra gaming-related patches, but nothing really revolutionary. Whereas SteamOS 3, this is an immutable distro based 
on Arch Linux and hyper specialized for use on the Steam Deck, including all of these extra drivers, for all of this hardware that's available here, a bunch of patches, a bunch of tweaks to System D to make things work nicer, and generally just a really good gaming system, but designed for this hardware. But even though things like Hollow ISO exist, eventually it is going to be available officially from Valve, and they're expecting other companies to use it on their handheld systems. And one more immutable distro, Vanilla OS, which in many ways looks fairly similar to Silverblue. Fedora Silverblue ships GNOME, Vanilla OS also ships GNOME. The major difference here is this one is based on Fedora, and this one is based on Ubuntu. But that's not the only difference. Vanilla OS introduces a whole new way of doing an immutable system. Silverblue is based on OS Tree, and Vanilla OS is using an in-house system called AB Root. AB Root makes use of two roots at the exact same time, and as you install things, it swaps them back and forth when you do a reboot. It's much more similar to the way that Android works. And also introduced to the world a distro agnostic package management solution that actually has applications in it. Apex, because in reality, it's not really a package manager, it's a wrapper for Distrobox, and Distrobox is a wrapper for Docker or Podman. Basically, you can run a distribution inside of your Linux distro, and Apex gives you this interface that lets you interact with that distro, installing things, and then exposing it to your regular system. So it's not really a package manager, but it interacts in a similar fashion and gives you access to any software you want. Or how about a distro like Parabola? This is a distro based on Arch Linux that strips out all of the proprietary software, not just from the distro itself making use of the Linux Libre kernel, but strips out the software from the repos as well. And I'm sure you've heard of Kali Linux, a distro that's entirely based around pen testing. It brings together a lot of the stuff you need into this really accessible package. And hey, we can't forget Gnome OS, a distro that exists solely for the purpose of testing out Gnome. And I can keep going on and on and on and on, but every single one of these distros, while they may not be a distro that you even remotely care about, it might be completely useless for your daily use case, or even like a specialized use case. You might have absolutely no reason to run any of these distros, but they all bring something new and potentially unique to Linux. These ideas might be so niche, they never catch on with any other distros. And that's totally fine. That is not the point. The point is that distros like this broaden the scope of what is known to be possible on Linux. They address new use cases. They experiment with new technologies. Maybe they even invent new technologies as well, like with vanilla OS. And they just give this new idea of what can be done. So don't feel discouraged by all of the distros out there. Maybe no one is going to recognize the work you've done on yours, even if what you've done is really, really cool. Go out there and create something unique. Create something that addresses something that wasn't being done before. Even if it's just a use case that you have, a lot of the time when it's just your use case, you'll find out that other people also had a similar problem as well, but maybe weren't able to frame it in a way that other people could understand. Even if that uniqueness is something really simple. If you've got an idea, get out there and go and create something. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you ever made a distro? What is your favorite distro out there? If it's something where it's like a desktop environment package, maybe it's a dot file collection, or maybe it's something truly unique. I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stanley Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast. Actually, I don't do that part of the outro anymore. That's going to be it for me. And 
I'm out.